Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos and today I'm downtown at, War at the War Memorial and behind me is one of the two great seahorse sculptures that flank the entrance to the memorial and that's what we're going to talk about today, the sculptures and the restoration work that's happening today and by today I mean literally today. It's going on behind me as you hopefully can see. Um, I am thrilled we're going to be joined by Christine Jorich. She's a conservator with Baltimore City's Department of General Services. I'm also thrilled that Baltimore Heritage, we're a partner with the Department of General Services um, and with funding from the Maryland State Arts Council to uh, get this, uh, these two sculptures uh, restored. Before I turn it over to Christine, though, let me say a word about the mem uh, War Memorial and about the sculptures themselves. We will have to do a whole video just on the memorial. It is fabulous. It has wonderful artwork inside, so stay tuned on that. Uh, it was completed in 1925. The architect was Lawrence Hall Fowler. It originally honored uh, Marylanders who fell during World War uh, I. Its mission was expanded to include Marylanders who fell during any of uh, our foreign wars. Um, and in 1925, Fowler, the architect, completed it. You may know some of his works. He designed the many wonderful buildings in Guilford and also the over-the-top wonderful library at Evergreen House. If you haven't been there, you gotta go. So in 1926, the building was done, but he was still working on the plaza, War Memorial Plaza, between uh, this building and City Hall, and he thought he needed something pretty grand to go along with his grand front. He had wide stairs, huge columns, big doors, but it kind of looked bare so he decided he needs some sculptures. He turned to his friend Joseph Maxwell, a local sculptor, and Maxwell suggested, why don't you have a competition? And that sounded good to Fowler. The competition was not thrown open to the world. It was thrown open to four artists only. Um, the four artists uh, were Mac, uh, Miller, I'm sorry, uh, Joseph Miller, the guy who suggested the competition. Uh, Miller had designed a war memorial in uh, North Carolina, so he had some experience. The second invited artist was Hans Schuler, maybe the most well-known of the day. You know his works, the giant Martin Luther at uh, uh, Lake Montebello, Sam Smith on Federal Hill, uh, Pulaski down in uh, Patterson Park. Um, he was invited. The third one was a gentleman named Leo Friedlander, who had designed works at Valley Forge, uh, the Virginia War Memorial, Rockefeller Center, and interestingly, the American Military Cemetery in Luxembourg. And the final one was a gentleman named Enbert Amatias. I hope I'm saying that right. He also had some works under his belt, the Kansas City Liberty Memorial. And then later, maybe uh, one of my favorites, he depicted 15 polio experts and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who had polio, for the, uh, war, uh, for the Polio uh, Hall of Fame in Georgia. Um, uh, the architect Fowler didn't want things to go crazy, so he suggested people, uh, the competitors, submit uh, mythical horses. Three of them did. Schuler, never one to be told what to do, decided to submit lions. He lost. Uh, the winner was Amateus. Uh, and Amateus, the young uh, sculptor, won. Um, the horses that he depicted behind me are wonderful, made of sandstone. Uh, Fowler, when he awarded the commission, uh, Amateus got $14,500, a deadline of May 30th, 1927. And then uh, a little more advice from Fowler to include the seals of Baltimore and the state of Maryland. So the horses, uh, the one on the left, the seahorse uh, in its uh, front legs, is holding an osprey symbolizing the U.S. Navy, and it has the great seal of the state of Maryland. The seahorse on the right uh, is holding an eagle uh, uh, symbolizing the U.S. Army, and it is holding the seal of the city of Baltimore. The horses themselves have wonderful ridged backs, and instead of hind legs, uh, have tails. They are clearly uh, sea horses, not uh, land horses. Um, I'm going to wrap up with a word about when they were completed and say thanks to Cindy Kelly and her book, uh, Outdoor Sculptures in Baltimore. She traced down correspondence with the architect and the sculptor, and apparently Amateus missed his May 30th deadline, but he did make a deadline for Armistice Day, November 11th, 1927, when War Memorial Plaza was dedicated. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Christine to talk a little bit about what's going on. Christine, we're all yours. Hi, my name is Christine Jurich. I'm an architectural conservator with the Department of General Services in the city of Baltimore. These sculptures are significant pr primarily in their scale. They're monumental um, sculptures in limestone representing America's aid of our allies in Europe during World War I. 
and they're they're actually sea horses like they are horses meant to look like they could traverse the ocean to, to aid our allies if you look at right now what their work they're doing is removing mortar from the mortar joints and when you see a mortar joint that means it's a separate piece of stone and you can see that entire piece up there is one solid piece of limestone which is which is phenomenal. So this, the impetus of this project is at some point they removed all the mortar and put in um, a caulking inappropriate for these kind of joints which caused further deterioration at the joints. So this project came about because we wanted to get that out in order to preserve the limestone and to ensure that it didn't deteriorate anymore and to also give it a major cleaning because of the location and in an urban environment it um, was very dirty and also with the pollutants in the air it can really affect limestone and its stability. Um, after we cleaned it we had to clean it three times and after the cleaning it revealed not only the beautiful color of the limestone but also the fossil record that's on the side of the limestone where you can see imprints of, of fossils which is very common in limestone and very beautiful which was obscured because of its dirtiness. This project is, is we're, we're working in collaboration with Lorton Stone whom uh, are masonry contractors and very very skilled in restoration work throughout DC and Baltimore and it's a pleasure to work with them again on this project. So next time you're downtown Please check out these wonderful monuments because they're going to be looking phenomenal. Along with, on the other side of the plaza is the work that DGS is doing on the restoration of City Hall. And also check out the DGS channel on YouTube for this video and other information about our restoration projects.